Hello, welcome to my tutorial on Google Forms. I'm going to try to quickly walk you through creating a Google Form and also explain some purposes for using Google Forms. Here I am logged in to Google Drive and I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. When we click Create, our fourth option down is Form. A form is somewhat of a derivative of the spreadsheet document because all the data that's collected from a form will eventually go into a spreadsheet. All right, here we are inside our form. And because we're in an organization, uh, in our case, a school, we have some options at the top that aren't necessarily in a personal Gmail account, uh, Google Drive account. So you can choose any of these options when you start, and it's important to do this at first instead of later because you may forget. Um, so here's one where you require the user to log in. And then if you're requiring that, you can also collect their username. This can be really helpful depending on the purpose. Of course, if you're looking for an anonymous survey, let's say, then you would not want to collect the respondent's username. What's good to know, though, is that the user will see on the form, it will tell them that it is collecting their information. So they'll know that right away. If you don't check this, it will not state any such thing, yet it may still require that they use their Ashland uh, or your organization's login. Next thing we're going to do is title our form. And then if you want some instructions, you can add that. You can also go up here and click on the theme button if you want to go into uh, make it a little fancier. Otherwise, you just come straight down here and start working on the questions. Now, you can add as many questions as you want. You can only edit one question at a time. So here I'm on question one. I may make question one, your name. And then if you want some instructions to go along with the title, you could add that here. And each question you could have as one of several types of questions. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just a quick explanation of them. Text is short text whereas paragraph text is for paragraphs. So if I were trying to collect, um, maybe letting somebody openly comment on something, I might use paragraph text, whereas name would be more appropriate as text. Multiple choice allows a user to choose one of many options, whereas check, check boxes allows a user to choose as many options as they like. Multiple choice, good for quizzes, check boxes, better for um, which of these do you use on a daily basis and then having a list of things people can choose from perhaps. Choose from a list only allows the user to choose one thing. It would be in a drop down list. So similar to check boxes, but only choosing one or similar to both of these options. But again, only choosing one. Scale would be rating things. Uh, rating something on a scale of one to five, or you can define the scale. And finally, grid, similar to scale, but for many different things. So if you wanna rank several things individually, but you wanna use a similar scale for all of it, you can do that in a grid. So once we have our uh, question designed, we're gonna choose this, make this a required question option, and then we say done. Anything that's been required will have this little asterisk next to it. Over here on the right, we could reopen this for editing, or we can duplicate it, which can be really helpful if you're using a similar format multiple times of a question, or trash, get rid of that question. The second question is ready for us already, so we'll go ahead and edit this. How was your experience in this class? And for this, I might use scale. Now I can have one to five, or um, I can add labels if I want. 
So I might have awful to wonderful. And making this a required question. You may want to have some questions be optional, but you really want to be thoughtful about doing that. And over time, you'll develop your own rhythm of which questions will be optional and which ones will be required. Now that I have completed creating my uh, survey here, I can choose how I'm going to share it. If I'm going to send it to a specific few people, I can click on email this form, which will take the form and email it out to however many people I wish to email it to. Another option is down here at the bottom, there's this long link. And if you right click on that link, you can copy the link address. And then you can use that address anywhere you would use a link. So for example, if you wanted to add it to a website, an email, a newsletter, um, if you were using a school management program such as Schoology, Edmodo, or Moodle, you could include it within those. Here I'm just going to come to a new tab and paste it in. And what it brings me to is the survey as it would appear to any user. Now I haven't done anything to fancy this one up, so it's very basic. And when I take the survey, I'll be nice to myself, submit, and it gives the user a nice option, uh, or a nice message that they've completed this. You can change this um, in the details of the form. The thing to notice here is submit another response is an option, which means that a person could submit over and over. So for truly scientific research, this will not work. And if you're concerned that somebody would use it over and over inappropriately, this may not work for you very well. Um, if you require them to use a login and you capture the login, then while you're taking out the anonymous um, view that you would have, you are also preventing somebody from using it over and over and over because you'd be able to remove the duplicate usernames. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So now I'm done. I can close that tab. Coming back to my form. Up here, you'll see under C responses, there's two options. One is a summary, one is a spreadsheet. Uh, summary is more graphical, while spreadsheet is raw data. And some more actions. Embed the form, which would mean instead of just putting a link somewhere, actually putting the survey itself into, say, your website. And then the edit confirmation lets you change the message that a person sees when they're done taking this. It is saved, although I often like to click that just to make sure. And that's pretty much the experience of creating a form. Now let's go ahead and open up the responses as a spreadsheet. You'll notice the timestamp is automatic, and then the data that I've entered when I did the form. Every person that takes the form will get a new line on your spreadsheet. You can also look at the responses as a summary, which as I mentioned before, is more graphical. So here's how is your experience in this class uh, as a question. And if 80 people responded, I would see that data and probably see some sort of bell curve here. All right. So now what I would like to do next is just go over a couple of uses. Um, what have I used? these forms for. There's so many different options and you really will get into it as you start using the form. Generally I use these with students as I'm a teacher and secondarily I use it uh, maybe with colleagues in courses like this so I'm still filling a role as a teacher. You can see here I'll just go over some of these titles. Here's some surveys that I've done, incoming survey, exit survey, 
I also have an equipment sign out request form that I use with students in my video class. So each time they want to borrow a piece of equipment, they open up the form. This can be used in lots of classes where students might borrow equipment or maybe you keep some sort of library. Instead of having a very specific tool, you could use something more generic like this. Um, I've had students submit project ideas through a form. So then I get their ideas, I can review them, and then meet with the students individually. Uh, I ran a event called Jumping for Joy. We kept track of lots of data in a spreadsheet, and part of that was a form that we asked participants to fill out when they were done. And the list goes on. So I have things here for parents, I have things for students. Um, you can also create quizzes using this tool. I happen to prefer other quiz tools, but if you like your tools to be, um, if you'd like to use everything in the Google universe, you certainly could do that. There's a tool that somebody has created, the code called um, Flubberoo, which allows somebody to create a quiz that would be self-graded, and so many more options. I think if you start using this, you'll find that there are ways that it can really benefit you in your profession, whether you're a classroom teacher uh, or any other role. It's just a great way to quickly gather data and the cost is none. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope it has been helpful. And if you have questions, as always, leave a comment or contact me directly. I'm Chad McGowan. So long.